Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster out here on this end. April 11th, 2024. It's about 10.44 p.m. here. California time. Latest activity shows a... Looks like a 1.9 over here across California. That is the latest, uh, latest quake there on the globe. Uh, so I haven't really heard anything about this asteroid or any unusual sights in the skies or anything. So I'm guessing that uh, 2024 GJ2 passed us without incident, according to this article here by Tech News. A um, couple days ago, this asteroid was discovered and you really couldn't find much about it uh, so i did a little look at the um, near earth object orbiter uh, map that kind of gives you a uh, a tracker in terms of the asteroid path and the earth plane path and uh, gosh darn it it looked pretty close and uh, i think eleven thousand miles was what the um, asteroid here uh, j or gj2 it looks like about 12,000 miles or so, 19,000 kilometers. Um, that's pretty close to the Earth. Just about 3% of the distance between the Earth and the Moon. But uh, as you can see, yeah, popped up here. Quite a few articles now in regard to this. But uh, it appears that this asteroid, very small asteroid, did not hit the Earth. There's many others in the future, though. You guys uh, hear about the uh, Apophis? In uh, 2029, April 11, 2029, they're saying that this is not going to hit us. But look how close this is. I mean, this is just another model out here. We'll cover this a little bit later. There's many asteroids out there. This is just the uh, oh, risk list objects that uh, pose potential hazards in the future. But uh, we'll cover the Apophis one at a later date. All right, earthquake activity. Let's go over here to the USGS map, see what's going on out here across the earthquake world. And, um, well, let's start off here in California, see if we got anything shaking out here in the southern portion of the state. Not a whole lot. Mostly smaller microquake activity out there right now. A 2.5 and above map shows nothing, at least in Southern California. And, goodness, <laughs> that includes most of the West Coast out here. So all these uh, earthquakes out here that are on the map are very small earthquakes below the 2.5 threshold. We got an earthquake outside of the Roseville area earlier this morning, a 2.4. Really nothing major of concern going on here across the West Coast. Uh, just tip, typical movement, very typical out here. Uh, one earthquake, a 1.3 in the Yellowstone area earlier this afternoon. Let's go check out the Yellowstone overview and see what's going on here there's some wind events from earlier earthquake activity not really seeing a whole lot out here on the map at all pretty quiet out there there was that one little earthquake this more uh this afternoon but aside from that things pretty quiet out there across the texas area still seeing some rock and rolling going on out in the oil fields in terms of earthquake activity and out here across new jersey the latest one a 1.7 earthquake that brings up the total tally here of earthquakes in the last week around New Jersey to 51 earthquakes. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on. One a lonesome earthquake. Well, it looks like there's a little bit more than one out here across Hawaii. About 20 around the Kilauea volcano and also down into the deeper areas here of the Pahala region. The latest shows a 2.5. Really nothing of concern, nothing of any uh, major difference compared to this morning. Uh, deeper activity here across the Tonga Trench area. The latest one shows a 4.6, 146 kilometers deep here. A little bit of activity down across the Kermadec Islands area. Uh, let's see if we got anything going on here across New Zealand. New Zealand still seeing some deeper quakes there underneath the area of North Island. We'll continue to watch that. Really not a whole lot of surface adjustment taking place up here. Occasionally, following these three pointers, we'll see uh, maybe one or two surface adjustments here around the plate boundary. But uh, we'll still got to continue to watch that New Zealand area. They're seeing a, a little bit of uptick here recently. Big time clustering going on in the typical crunch zone. I call this the crunch zone because this is pretty much where, well, a lot of the plates meet. This is the crunch area over here. It's not really called the crunch zone, but uh, just a word I threw in there to describe 
the constant earthquake activity that's going on. All the plates tend to be pointing in this area. And of course, what happens when you got a lot of plate movement and whatnot in one area? You get these earthquakes on any given day. So fours and fives and threes and twos and all sorts of stuff going on here across the Indonesia Islands area. And uh, we got a 4.2 up around the Taiwan area, a little 3.6 here off the coast of Japan. That uh, is a fairly new quake and into the Japan Trench, it looks like. The Kurokamachaka and the Aleutian Trench up here, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot of movement to report here across this area for now. And uh, a little activity stirring up here north of the Himalayas. It looks like a uh, four-pointer out here into the China region. One of the latest quakes here this evening on the map. Uh, around the Turkey area, looks like a couple twos and a four-pointer out there as well. Nothing really showing up here across the USGS map, but uh, seeing, it out, seeing it out here on the Earthquake 3D globe, a little bit of movement here. Um, aside from that, uh, South America, handful of earthquakes down there. Uh, the main areas right now across this area of the planet looks to be down across the Middle America Trench region. Seen uh, quite a bit of swarming down here, uh, including a four-pointer up along the Gulf of California. Uh, now, it doesn't look like USGS is reporting any of that activity. Just got an earthquake here into the uh, Pinnacles area along the plate boundary. I was going to say keep an eye here along the west coast because of all this movement here. It looks like it is trying to work its way up the plate boundary. A lot of older movement quakes here over the last 24 hours with the newer activity starting to be seen here along the plate boundary that heads up towards the California area. So we'll continue to watch that area. Um, let's check out the space weather activity. I know we got um, a little bit of uptick going on here. Look at that long duration event earlier. Um, was this put out today? Let's see, it was. Looks like an apparent eruption was observed beyond the northeastern limb from old region 3615. So the elevated activity that I'm seeing here, uh, there's a, a quick impulsive M flare from um, earlier, but look at this long duration event here. Now this looks like some t giant M flare activity with a uh, massive CME that was produced, but with it not directly facing Earth, it's basically out way out there on the eastern limb of the sun. We still picked up that signal, but that is a ginormous explosive event there that lasted for many hours. Uh, definitely looks like things are starting to kick back up here in terms of space weather activity. Let's see what we got. Here is the visible disk. Quite a few more active regions out here. A look at the magnetogram image of the sunspots. Uh, this one over here looks like it's starting to grow a little bit now that it's starting to go off on the western limb. Goodness. And we're left with uh, a few sunspots here kind of trailing across the eastern limb. Uh, 36, 15. Let's see where those sunspots are at, the uh, far side sunspots. Got to go down here and check it out. 36, 15 over here. Bring up the most recent image here. 3615, 3614 up here. Definitely, this spot right here is looking promising here. It looks like we may be seeing, kind of hard to tell, maybe a, another active region ahead of this one on the southeastern limb of the sun. Got to watch this spot. This is the one that produced many M flares here uh, weeks ago while it was facing the Earth. It's coming back around the bend again for another trip, and it does look like it's holding steady in terms of the size of it. Uh, we'll get a better look here at the complexity of that sunspot once it comes back around the bend. This is one of the newer regions here. It looks like maybe barely we can see a hint of it out there. We'll probably get a little bit better view tomorrow sometime. But uh, either way, Elevated space weather activity here in the uh, days ahead, it looks like. 80% chance for a C flare, M flare 25% chance, and X flare around 1% or so for now. Uh, the most complex sunspot out there is going to be 3634 with a beta gamma, delta, uh, beta gamma class. 3634 is going to be this area up here. And 
Yeah. A little bit of complexity going on here. we got a couple more regions behind that area that uh, need some watching as well. Not a whole lot of auroras in the forecast here, folks. Hopefully that will change as we look into, uh, you know, the days ahead here. Yeah, Kevin's got this marked here. Uh, former sunspot 3615, barely visible out here. There's that northeastern limb eruption from, uh, I believe that's 3614, one of the uh, former sunspots. Either way going to get interesting out here in the days ahead all right uh severe weather we got anything major going on out here this is a current uh activity looks like a little thunderstorm activity out here for the um overnight hours and early morning hours out here for the friday not quite friday out here in california yet, but for those folks it is and um looking out into the forecast here day five still looks like this could be a serious event here for severe weather uh this is the uh, typical tornado alley right seems like mostly past couple years or so the to tornado alley has kind of shifted down to the southeast but this is a a very good uh region right here where the uh, typical tornado alley used to be anyway i think it still is but uh, that's going to be an interesting setup here. They're looking at a 30% chance for some severe weather out here. And this is only on day five. That's going to be Monday into Tuesday with an overnight component to it as well. So a little on the uh, scary side there for some severe weather. But we'll check that out as we get a little bit closer to that date. There's the low pressure system off on the east right now. We hit about 85 degrees here today in Northern California. That's all going to change beginning tomorrow and this weekend. We got a much colder system coming into the West Coast out here. Pretty uh, decent low pressure, bringing in some rain and some snow. That uh, is going to interact and produce that severe weather here on Monday into Tuesday morning here across Oklahoma in those regions I just showed you. Again, we'll cover that a little bit later on as far as the details go. It does look like a lot of colder air coming in as we head into late next week. And uh, following that, well, the models are uh, a little iffy. Really don't see any major pattern change out here following that event, but we'll continue to watch it. Uh, let's check out Iceland real quick, see what's going on there from the live from Iceland site. I know we're still seeing some activity out here. Maybe we were. Where'd he go? Kind of foggy or cloudy out there, it looks like. See if this one's working. Hopefully it is. It's a little on the slow side, unless it's me. No, not me. I'm still running full blast here, it looks like. But uh, something's going on with that webcam. Yeah, not a not a spectacular view yet, but I'm assuming the eruption is still uh, continuing. A look at the earthquake activity out here across Iceland really doesn't show too much. About uh, 25 earthquakes or so in the last 12 hours. Really not a whole lot of um, further movement out here across the area of interest. But uh, we'll continue to watch it and check back on it. All right, folks, uh, what else is there? Trimmer map here tonight, the Cascadia Trimmer, 74 epicenters of Trimmer, a little bit down in Oregon and a little bit up in the Vancouver Island range. Now, this is Trimmer activity occurring into the deeper regions here of the Cascadia subduction zone. But um, it's been fairly quiet. We've had little events here of Trimmer, but nothing like what we had seen in the years past here where we've seen... Uh, large intervals of trimmer on a regular uh, reoccurrence level and something's going on here recently uh, where the trimmer count has gone to bare minimum so it could mean that things are pretty well locked out here but we'll continue to watch that of course the cascadia subduction zone here a major player out here one day uh, when it comes to the potential damage that's going to take place here across the Pacific Northwest uh, when that thing produces a 9.0 or greater earthquake. It's been uh, 324 years since the last one, so a little bit of strain built up out there. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Seismograph stations, fairly calm, fairly clear. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe while you're here. Welcome to, uh, picked up a lot of new subscribers here recently, so welcome on to the channel. 
Hopefully you guys stick around, give the video a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow for Friday. Friday morning update coming up here after a little bit of sleep, of course. Have a good night, everyone.